Welcome to Deliverance Tabernacle Church, Pasadena. We're located at 1299 Sunset Avenue in Pasadena, California, sharing God's love with the world. Thank you for joining us in worship today. We're glad you're here. Get ready to be blessed through uplifting music, inspiring praise, along with a practical and relevant message from our pastor, Terry Turrentine. Invite a friend and let them know we're saving a seat just for them. Let's join the... Come on, just clap your hands. We came to glorify God's name. Glory, glory, glory to our King. Glory, glory, glory to our King. To the Lamb that was slain for our being. To the Lamb that was slain. Come on, just say it with us. Glory, glory, glory to our King. Glory, glory, glory to our King. To the Lamb that was slain. For our being, to the Here we land go. that was slain. For our being, we cry. Glory to our King. Oh, we cry. Glory to our King. From the top. Hey, yeah. Glory, glory, glory. To our King. Glory, glory, glory to our King. To the Lamb that was slain for our being. To the Lamb that was slain for our being. Glory, glory, glory to our King. Glory, glory, glory to our King. To the Lamb that was slain. For our being, to the Lamb that was slain. For our being, we cry glory to our King. Hey, hey. we cry glory to our King. Come on, where you are, just lift it up and say, we cry. So worthy, so worthy. Hallelujah. Lord, your word, your word, you're so worthy. We cry glory to our King. Glory, glory, glory to our King. Hey, we cry glory to our King. Glory 
nada. Aleluia. 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 Bless the Lord. All my soul and all that is done within me. Aleluia. I'll be reading 1 Corinthians 15, 57, 58. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his great and divine word. Praise God. Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. Can't praise you enough. Even if I tried, cause you've been so good to me. Come on, everybody, just say, Lord, you are. Lord, you are good. You've been so good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good to You've me. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. I owe you my life. I can't praise you enough. Even if I try. Even if I try, God. You've been so good, so good to me, to me. Come on, wherever you are, just lift it up and say, Lord, you've been good. Lord, you are good. You've been so good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good. Is that anybody's testimony this morning? I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. I can't praise you enough. Praise you Even enough. if I tried. Even if I you know why? Because you've been so good. So good. You've been, you've been so good. You've been so good to me. You've been better than good to me. Help me say. So many doors you open. How many? So many ways you made. So many times. So many times you healed. You've been better than good to me. So many doors. So many doors. And so many ways. So many ways. So many times. So many times you healed. You've been better than good to me. So many doors. So many doors. And so many ways. So many ways. So many times. So many times you healed. You've been better than good to me. 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 When I look back over my life, you've been better than good to me. When I look back over all the things that you've done, you've been better than good to me. Lord, we thank you because you've been. Lord, we pray you be good. You've been better than good to me. I should have been dead and gone. I should have been dead and gone. I should have been dead and dead. 
said no. You've been better than good to me. But you said no. You've been better than good to me. But you said no. You've been better than good to me. But you said no. You've been better than good to me. You keep on making a way. You've been better than good to me. Out of no way. You've been better than good to me. That's why you've been. You've been better than good to me. That's why you've been. You've been better than good to me. Jesus, you are. Better than good to me. Ah! 
right where you are. to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Just right there, just right there. Just, just take just a little bit of time just to give God some praise. Begin to worship him. For he has been so good. He's been so kind. He's wonderful all by himself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We give God honor and praise for he is so good. He is so kind. He's been better to me than I've been to myself. And I praise you, Lord, and I thank you for your goodness and your mercy. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord, and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. We praise God for you today. Thank God for his precious blood that covers my soul right now. I want to talk to you for a little bit. Judges 6, 1 through 14. It's time to stand. It's time to stand. I'm going to read all of that, so bear with me. I'm going to read all the way from uh, 1 through 14. Familiar passages of Scripture. And it reads, and the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hands of the Median seven years. And the hands of the Median prevailed against Israel. And because of the Medianites, the children of Israel made them the dens which are in the mountains and caves and strongholds. And so it was when Israel had sown that the Midianites came up. And the Amalekites and the children of the east, even they came up against them. And they encamped against them and destroyed the increase of the earth. Till thou comes unto Gaza and left no sustenance for Israel. Neither sheep nor ox nor ass. For they came up with their cattle in their tents. And they came as grasshoppers for a multitude. For both they and their camels were without number. And they entered into the land to destroy it. And Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. And it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites, that the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel 
which said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you forth out of the house of bondage. And I delivered you out of the hands of the Egyptians and out of the hands of all that oppressed you and drove them out from before you and gave you their land. And I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the gods of the Amorites in those lands ye dwell. But ye have not obeyed my voice. And there came an angel of the Lord and set an oak, which was in Ophrah, that pertained unto Joash, the uh, Amorite, And his son, Gideon, threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon said unto him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles, which our fathers told us of? Saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us unto the hands of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might. And thou shalt save Israel, for the hand of the Lord, hand of the Midianites, have not I sent you or sent thee? May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and to the hearing of his great divine word. I know that was long. Thank you for indulging me with that long passage. The message of the Bible that God has made each and every one of us, made us for at a purpose. And to, uh, in a mission that we may live out our lives, finding what that purpose is. We are missing out on something very important if we don't seek God for our purpose. We can rebel and go another way, but we will miss the blessing of finding the reason of which we were born. The Bible says in Proverbs 19 and 21, many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. All of us are born with a purpose of belonging to God and living in him. He is our creator, our savior, our friend. And to miss knowing him would be the greatest mistake of our lives. There is an interesting passage in the gospel. In Luke, it says, all people, even the tax collectors, when they heard Jesus' word, Acknowledge that God was the way, the right way. But the Pharisees and the experts in the law rejected God's purpose for themselves. They fancied themselves, as we do today, um, that we know more than God. That we are more religious than Jesus. That we don't need Jesus. We just need what's in our head and what's in our mind that we can get by on that. But how many of us know that we are destined to follow God, and if we want to be blessed by God, we must follow the word of God. So beyond, uh, there is a more specific purpose for each and, of, each and every one of us. Some of us were born to be musicians, play the gospel, sing. Some of us were born to be teachers, bankers, doctors, lawyers, parents. You may feel you were called to be even a politician or a preacher. Your gift may be cooking or entertaining helping people in need, ministering to people in some way. Because the Bible says uh, that, that, that uh, let me go back to that. But, every, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, another the word of acknowledgement. By the same Spirit, uh, to another faith by the same Spirit, to uh, gifts of healing by the sp same Spirit, the workings of miracles, um, and another prophecy and others discerning of spirits to other di uh, diverse uh, kind of tongues and to others interpretation of those tongues. But all these things that, uh, want, that, that, that are all work in one, uh, one spirit dividing in every man several as he will. So what that is saying is that we've all been created for a purpose. We all have something on the inside of us that will give uh, uh, to give over to, to, to God in the kingdom of God. We all have a purpose. 
You see, Gideon in, in, in the Old Testament, he was a, a man called by God, and he was there for a special purpose. I've been trying to preach uh, Esther. I'm going to get to her sooner or later because I'm so intrigued, uh, again, with when the Bible says, for such a time as this. Many of you all are, are born and, and here for such a time as this. I wonder sometimes what would have happened if I was born in another era. What would happen, you know, you, you, some folk think about it. But what if I was born in slavery time? What if I was born in, 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 in uh, Jesus' time? I don't know, but I'm born at this time. You're born at this time that you may enhance the kingdom of God at this time. We, 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 we sometimes don't realize our purpose because we don't seek God. But I'm here to tell somebody today, it's time to stand up for what God wants. I was thinking the other day about um, right and wrong and how this coronavirus is overshadowing the things that are happening in the world that are right and wrong. Uh, we, we talked about George, George Floyd about how many, how many weeks ago? And it seems like in, in, in the equality, and how, how, how much are we talking about it now? How much are we talking about right and wrong and, 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 and a movement that goes to, to what God wants as the equality and, and, and bringing up people. I, I, I believe that we're losing steam in that. And, I, and, and I'm trying, like I said, I'm trying to, I was trying to talk about Esther, but the Lord put this in my spirit because it's time to stand up because what we do is, as, as people, we cry loud, but we don't cry long. And we got to understand that in order for change, we got to cry long. I, I, I saw a, a posting on my walk yesterday, and it talked. It was a Mahatma Gandhi's uh, quote saying, "If you want be the change that you want to see, many of us are looking and waiting for someone else to jump out and be that change. But I'm here to tell you, just like Gideon, be that change that you want to see in the world. Be that be that person that 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 that, that has the Holy Ghost down on in." inside of them that will preach and teach and witness to anybody who will listen and those who won't listen. Be that change. Walk right. Talk right. Be right. Be that person who God is calling for. Let it all start with you. Be that person who has that in spiritual empowerment, who has the Holy Ghost on the inside of them, uh, that people will see and say, what must I do to be saved? We, hear, we see here in in, in Judges, were Gideon. Huh. God had chose Gideon for a special purpose. Gideon from the understanding of what God's purpose was for him and how he fit into God's plan. And, and, and these are the same things that keep us, some of the same things that keep us, I'm going to talk about, from discovering the reason why we were born. Gideon's first challenge, like our first challenge, is we must overcome discouragement. The people of Israel had been horribly oppressed. They were starving. Everything had been taken away from them because the Midianites kept destroying the cattle and the crops. Every time they take one step forward, the enemy would come and take away uh, what they had accomplished. Am I talking to anybody? They would take away. It seemed like every time I take one step forward, the enemy comes in and tries to tear things up, and I take two steps back. There was great suffering and discouragement in the land. All hope was gone. I see that in 2020. Gideon was hiding in an old wine press that he had dug. He, he, he was threshing a few wheat, a few, few, few stalks of wheat because he he had hid from the Midianites. So he was over there depressed. And look what look, look what God did. Look what God did. He was over there depressed, didn't have, depressed, didn't have any joy, didn't have any hope. But how many of us know that God has a ram in the bush? How many of us know that God? This didn't take God by surprise. Some of us looking like we're so surprised, but I'm here to tell you, God, this didn't take what we're going through right now. Didn't take God by surprise. God has instituted a plan uh, that we should go by. And here, uh, uh, Gideon is in, in, in a place where he's depressed, and, and he's surprised. And as, as in verse 12, it says, the Lord is with you, mighty man. Of valor, and I, I, I can just imagine Gideon looking around and looking and saying, "Who are you talking to? I'm hiding. I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm no mighty man of valor. As a matter of fact, my tribe is the weakest, and I'm the weakest in my tribe. So who are you talking to, Lord? 
Who are you talking to, angel? But how many, how many folk know that God has a plan for you? God has, God has something for you beyond what you can see, what you can feel. God has already worked it out for you. But he's got to get, well, well, we got to get to a place where we understand who we are in Christ Jesus. We got to understand, yeah, you, he, he sees us in a different way than we see ourselves. Here they ain't, I'm hiding from the Midianites. I'm this, I'm, I'm, I have no hope. I'm depressed. And here the angel comes and says, the Lord is with you, mighty man, mighty warrior. I'm here to tell somebody right now that God is telling you, I am with you. Why are you sitting and hiding from the enemy? I'm all, I already got it worked out. I've already got it planned. Step out on faith. You are a mighty man of, of, of valor. You are a, 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 a woman, a, a strong woman. Get yourself up. Get out of hiding and do what God has for you to do. I understand he was scared. He was hiding out. Hmm. But then God always sees us, as I said, different than we see ourselves. We see ourselves in that. We see our inadequacy and our failures. And we use them as an excuse. He saw and he sees his inadequacies. You saw and you see your inadequacies. And then we use that, well, Lord, I don't do this good and I don't do that good. And people said I'm this and people said I'm that. But here Gideon's discouragement comes pouring out. He says to the Lord's messenger, but sir, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Stop feeling sorry for yourself. If the Lord is with us, why have I lost my job? If the Lord is with us, why am I facing foreclosure? If the Lord is with us, why am I still? Why am I kind of? Why am I hungry? If the Lord is with us, why is my bank account dwindling down to almost nothing? But I want you to know, God has not brought you this far to leave you now. God has not brought you to a place where you are for him to just drop you and let you go. I want you to know that there's discouragement and there's things that come in our way, but God has already got that taken care of. This did not catch him by surprise. But Lord, I'm sick. Hmm. Bible says, by his stripes I am healed. This didn't catch him by surprise. Where did all the wonders go that our fathers told us about? This is what he's telling to the angel. Did not the Lord bring us out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and put us in the hands of the Midians. That's a, verse 13. And when God gets serious with you, just look what he said. He said, the angel does not argue with you. Read that passage. He did not argue with Gideon because it's already planned out. I don't have to argue God's plan to you. I don't have to argue. I just got to instruct you and let you know there is a plan of victory in your life. There is a plan that's an overcomers in your life. There's a plan that God is going to do exceedingly abundantly more than you can ask or think in your life. But you and I got to get to a place where I have to cut, get over my discouragement because it all looks like it's all over with. The Midianites were coming and tearing up stuff. The Midianites were coming and, and taking animals and crops and I'm starving. But the Bible lets me know that when God has a plan for you, the devil cannot. Hmm. He can only do what God allows him to do. And if I just stay with the Lord, I got to come get past my discouragement. How do I get past my discouragement? I got to do what David did. I have to encourage myself. David asked, David asked God, what should I do? Because he, all hope was lost. All his, his wives and his children in the city were burned down by the Amalekites. And he said, what should I do? And God said, Go, go, go get your stuff back. But that was after he encouraged himself. He had cried every tear he could cry, the Bible says. But then he encouraged himself. How do I encourage myself? All I got to do is just think about, I don't have to think about long, hard, or long ago. I can just think about what God had already done in my life. And I can, I can, I can encourage myself through the word that says he has a cattle on a thousand hills. By his stripes I am healed. I got joy that's unspeakable. I got peace that, that surpasses all understanding. I got, I got all those things that, that I have a victory in if I just hang on to God's 
unchanging hand. Because the angel didn't argue with him. He said, go in the strength you have and save Israel of the Midian's hand. He said, am I not sending you question mark? So you can lay down on your blessing. You can stop in your blessing. You can be depressed and, and pull back in your blessing. But the Bible says, I've already, if I'm, haven't I, am I not sending you? Which means it is already taken care of. It's all you already got to victory. The promises of God says you win. The promises of God says you shall be victorious. Why? Judges uh, 6, 14 through 16 says the answer to your discouragement as it was with Gideon is to acknowledge that God is with you and makes up for your inadequacy. Yeah, we look and see, and see, and what has happened is, uh, I might get in trouble in this, but that's okay. We're we, we looking for some folks to be the, a certain kind of way. Church folk, we look at folks to come into the church, and, and God, we say God can't use them until they get to a place where I think they should be. But I'm here to tell you, God is not looking for your approval. Mm, God is not looking for your approval or who he uses. God can use anybody he wants to use. Uh, Gideon saying, I'm the weakest of everybody. Therefore, he is in a place, as we have said here, he's in a position for transition because he realizes I cannot do anything unless God allows me. I cannot go in my power, but I have to go in his power. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So when I go in his might, when I go in his power, I can't lose. When I go, and, 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 and some of us got to understand, God is going to use some folks in our new normal. God is going to use some folks that we didn't think he was going to use. But he's not asking you again for your approval. He's just saying, I'm going to start to start to anoint people that you don't, that you, 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 you may think is not worthy. But here, Gideon is saying, I'm not worthy. And God is saying, I'm not asking you if you're worthy. I'm asking you if you're available. I'm not asking you, hallelujah, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not asking you how you think about yourself. I'm telling you how I see you, mighty warrior. I'm not asking you if, if uh, you got the strength. I'm telling you, you can go in my strength. So many say that I'm not all the way delivered yet. Uh, none of us are. Hello, somebody. God is looking for someone who, who, who's given a testimony that I may not be where I want to be but I'm sure enough not where I used to be. Can you just think about where God has brought you from? Because God right now is looking uh, for folks, like he said in John 4, 23 and 24, that the hour cometh and is now when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Uh, Gideon, Gideon, but Gideon is still not sure about this. How many of us have, you know that God is, God is placing things in your, in your path and in your way, and, but you're still not sure about it. And you keep asking God for, for signs, <laughs> for signs. Lord, give me this and uh, show me this. Even though the angel of the Lord is standing right before Gideon, um, He's still asking God for a sign. Even though he got a sign when he burnt up the offering that he offered him, he still was asking God for a sign. Why was he asking God for a sign? Because he really didn't understand who he was in God. Can you just imagine if God comes and just visits you? Do you, do you know how special you are when the Lord comes to you and places things in your heart? Do you know how special God is? He is, I mean, how you are special to God when he comes and puts some things down in your spirit that will manifest and help the, the, the people of God. We've got to get over our discouragement. Second of all, we've got to get over our doubt. Gideon says to the angel of the Lord, who is standing right in front of him? Give me a sign. Is it really you talking to me? Gideon prepared an offering for the Lord and as a sign, the angel of the Lord touched the offering in, in his staff and the fire flamed from the rock and consumed the offering. Then the angel of the Lord disappeared from his sight. Hmm. A visit from God, like I said, is a special sign that would have been good enough for anybody. 
but it still wasn't good enough to get in. And it's not getting, and, and, and many times it may not be good enough for us. But it's time to stand up, folks. It's time to come out of hiding. The Midianites are camped against the Israel. The enemy is all around. And they think he's going to win. The enemy's got some folks, got some of us right here that believe that they got you beat. But here, God has already got a plan. I want you to know it doesn't matter what it looks like. God has got a plan for your victory. As long as you stay faithful to him and bless his name, God has got a victory in your future. The Midianites camp against Israel, and Gideon summons the men from all the towns. And came to protect the land from the invading army. The Bible says, Gideon said to God, if you will save Israel by my hand, as you have promised, look, I will place a wool fleece on the threshing floor. If there is dew on the fleece in the morning or in, 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 in dry ground, then I will know that you will save Israel by my hand, as you said. And that is what, and, that, and that's what happened. Gideon rose early the next day and squeezed the fleece and wrung out the dew of the, uh, 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 in, in a bowl of water. In the passage, we, 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 that's where we get the phrase, putting out the fleece for the Lord. What, 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 what Gideon was asking, he was asking for a sign. God gave him a sign. And then he said, well, hold on. How many of us are telling God to hold on? God has given you what you're supposed to do. He's given you your, he sent, he, he, he sent, some, some, someone or uh, something in, 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 in your dreams or in your meditation or through the word of God and you know and all of a sudden you've seen a sign and now you ask God for another sign and, that, and now you, you ask God for another sign. I want somebody to know it's time to stand up and those signs that God has given you, you don't need because the, 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 the fleece is not is, it, it, we, we look at it sometime and we think oh it's wonderful, God did it but that was an action of uh, 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 for Gideon of not having God is looking for somebody that's going to have faith in him that says, let the chips fall where they may. For God, I live. For God, I die. The fleece would naturally hold water in the ground around it. So when then he said, Lord, don't be angry with me. I just want one more request. Allow me to ask you one more time. And he said, Allow the ground to be wet and the fleece to be dry. And God did that. Many people take this, as I said, as an example. Huh. But I want you to know God is looking for somebody with faith uh, because we have to understand that there is not enough proof where there is no faith. Gideon is asking for proof, but there's not enough proof when you don't have faith. God is saying you got to, I got to have faith in him that he may reward us Hello, somebody. With the scripture, uh, Hebrews 11 and, and 6, it says, And without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and he, and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. So here we're talking about for us in this, this Hebrew, Hebrew text, we, we, we got to get to a place where we have faith that God is going to do exactly what he said he's going to do. Anybody right here know that God has a plan for you and he, he's going to do what he already said, said he was going to do? Many of you, God has already impressed on your mind and in your heart and in your mind that you got some things in the works right now, but one of the holdups is, is you have faith that God is talking to. I want somebody to know and, and, and if you can just trust him and just to step out on faith, take one step out on faith and allow God to do it. Stand up in the midst of a fallen world that God can use you any way he can. Don't, wor don't, don't, don't worry about where you are. If you're available and have the desire to do what's right, what God is saying, if you repent, I am faithful and just to forgive you for all your sin. If you repent and, 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 and your choosing is to walk in an upright way, God can use you. Many have faith problems because of who we are. God can't use me. I'm not worthy. I want somebody to know. I don't care what you did five minutes ago. If you repent right now, you, got, you don't worry about if you're worthy. God is just looking for your availability. I've done too much. Don't worry about what you've done. I had a cousin here, cousin a few, uh, a few years ago that came and to a funeral and he wouldn't come into the church. 
And I said, come on, brother, come on into the church. He said, I've done too much. I can't go in here. In a couple of ways, that's a good thing and a bad thing. And the good thing is that he understands that he is a sinner and needs to be saved. He understands that. But on the other hand, he has to realize there's nothing that he can't, that, that he has done that God will not forgive for. There's nothing that he has done that God still doesn't open his arm and say, come on in, son. I made you. I know all about you. There's nothing that you can do uh-huh, that, uh, that, that, that will, will have God throw you away. Because when he brings you in, what he's going to do is he's going to flip it like he did with Paul and begin to use you and let you be a minister, allow you to be a minister unto those that you hung out with, those who, who you congregated with, those of you who you, those are the folks that you have done wrong. Because, because I, want, I want us to know that some of us don't speak the same language because some language that you speak, I may not speak. What am I talking about? There's some folks who, who you, you know the, there's cliques and and, and, and there's groups of people who can talk in the, in, in right around you, and you won't know what they're talking about. Drug addict has his own language. A gangbanger has his own language. Don't get so uppity, church folk. You got your own language. Because I'm too blessed to be stressed. What does that mean to somebody who don't know Christ? I'm too this, I'm too that. And we have our sayings, and we speak. But I'm here to tell you, if we just allow God to use us, he'll turn that thing around and allow allow those who don't know him those who don't know him allow that person to be used to speak that language that they may come on in the third point is uh, we must realize if we're going to stand we must realize we're going uh, excuse me that if we are going to realize the purpose for which you have been born we have to overcome obstacles Everybody is not on the equal footing. There's obstacles that come in our lives. There will always be obstacles. And for some of these, uh, God is testing your faith so you can grow. Uh, that uh, was the case with Gideon. As he faces the army of the Midianites, which is an obstacle, which stretches as far as he could see, he realized that he is overwhelmingly outnumbered. How many of us are going through something right now that when we first, when we look at it, we believe we are outnumbered? We look and see our situation that is, we believe is insurmountable. When we look at our situation, we don't look at the victory. We just looking to survive. I'm here to tell somebody, I'm not looking to survive my fight. I'm not looking to survive my, my adversary. I'm looking to have victory through my average. In my, in, in my victory, there is survival, but I'm looking to be victorious in what comes before me. I'm looking to be victorious in my health situation. I'm looking to be victorious in my social situation. I'm looking to be victorious in my mental situation. I'm looking to be victorious with my family. I'm looking to be victorious in my community. I'm not looking just to survive and just get beat up. I'm looking to be victorious and to hold my hands up and say, Lord, I thank you for my victory. You brought me from a mighty long way, and I believe that you're still God. I believe that, that, that you're God all by yourself. I believe that you're strong and mighty. I believe that I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Therefore, hmm, I'm not looking just to survive. I'm looking to go higher and higher. People who just survive stay on that same level, but I'm looking to go higher and higher. And when you remember how this, this story goes, God directs Gideon to tell his men if they are afraid that they must they just go on home. With that, 22,000 men left and only 10,000 remained to fight the army. But the Lord said, that's still... I want, I, want, I want you to know some of us right now are going through some things that we're saying, Lord, I need some reinforcement. But God is saying, I'm about to do some things that are about to blow your mind. You think you, think you need more, but I want you to see the God that I am and how I'm working in your life, how I'm working in building you. I want, I, I want, I want, to, I want God wants to see, wants to show us that it, more doesn't mean better. It, all it means is just more in the will of God. God can do anything he wants to do anytime he wants to do it. So when he, when he has it all set up, he doesn't need folks who are afraid. Uh -huh. 
getting credit for what he's done. So he says, send these scary folks home because I got some things that are about to happen. I got some things that are going to be in a place where folks are going to look at you, look at you and be in amazement of what I'm doing in your life. Some of y'all, some of us right now need God to do something right now that we need to be, and, 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 and he, he's, wait, he's just waiting, we're, and we're saying, Lord, how long? And he's saying, just hold on a little while longer because I need to drop some folks off of you because they don't need to get my glory because I have some things that I'm going to do in your life that folks are going to say, how did he do that? How did that happen? Judges 7 and 4 said, then as men went down to the water to drink, 300 of them kept going through the water as they stopped, scooped up the water in their hands and drank. All the rest fell to their knees and gulped the water. And the Lord said, with 300 men, I will save you and give the Midianites unto your hands. Let all the other men go. There's obstacles. God is working some things out in our lives right now. There are obstacles, but they're not too big. The, the, the enemy came up to eat up my flesh, but he stumbled and fell. There are obstacles. There are things that, that the enemy is bringing up to you, but I want you to know, don't be afraid. Don't give in. Don't give, don't, don't give the devil no credit. Just begin to bless God for what's about to happen in your life because if, he's, if, if the devil is coming your way, that means God knows about it and he knows he's going to get the victory out of it. But I just got to stand in the place and give God some praise right where I am. I don't know how I'm going to, I don't know how God is going to bring me out. I don't know how God is going to, 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 to get the victory, but all I know is he's going to get the victory. Therefore, I'm going to bless him right now for the victory, because it looks like the enemy came and wants to overtake me here. It said it looked like grasshoppers and locusts, but here I want you to know I don't care how much the enemy comes up against you. If it's just me and God, if God says I have the victory, I will slay the enemy just like God says I would. I will have the power from God, because I'm going his might, to slay the enemy that comes up against me. Understand, it's time to stand. Fourth. Final thing, if we want to do, realize what our purpose is, we must remain faithful. Gideon has discovered God's purpose for him, and God has used him. He was used by God to deliver Israel from their enemies. But the reason that Israel was being oppressed in the first place, remember, is because they began to worship foreign gods. And that passage just says, you did not obey me. God is saying, before you get in position or in position to transition, before you are going to have the victory, you must remain faithful and realize you got to go back to the place of repentance. I got to go back to the place of repentance. We have gotten so comfortable in our lives. And as in Gideon, everything was taken away from them because they got too comfortable in disobeying God. I find ourselves that way in 2020. So much has been taken away from us because God is looking for repentance from his people. God is looking for us to come back to him and say, Lord, I did it. I, 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 in no way no, no way around it. I'm going to admit it. I did it. I'm not going to justify it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to try to, to explain it away. I'm not going to try to give excuses. I did it. And because I did it, I'm looking to you to forgive me for it. Because I have to understand if I want to be that person where change begins, I must admit my hmm, faults unto him and allow him, allow God to use me. Stop worshiping these foreign gods. And, 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 and that doesn't mean Buddha. That doesn't mean uh, other, uh, other gods. What that means is stop worshiping uh, the things that keep us from God. Stop worshiping our bank accounts. Stop wor worshiping our, our, our husbands, our wives, our children. Stop worshiping our cars and our home. 
God is saying you're worshiping them. Those, those things can be good, but you've got to put me first. And if you want to find out what your purpose is, your purpose might be a vocation where you minister to hundreds of thousands of people, but your, or your purpose might be to, to, to minister to one who's, who, gives a, who gives a cure for cancer. But God is saying, I want you to get your focus back on me and stay faithful. Stop looking at yourself as nothing and look at yourself as something in me. If I believe that God is who he says he is, that he has all power in his hand, I don't have a problem with being faithful because I know he's going to come and see about me. I know he's going to, to allow me to get to a place where I want to be. I know he's going to allow me to overcome uh, my, my, my disappointments and my failures. What is it that we have to do? Well, we first have to get over discouragement. We have to get over doubt. And we, we got to get over those things because if, if you notice, those things are a mental thing. God is saying in his word here, get over yourself. Hmm. Get over yourself and understand that I am God and I will do exactly what I said I would do. Paul said, I die daily. He meant he no longer lived for himself. But every day, he becomes closer to God by doing God's will and not his own. You can see that in 1 Corinthians 15 and 31. And my question to you today, when we stand, when we make a decision to stand, have you got to a place where you're in a place of repentance? That's number one. Are you in a place where you're going to get over yourself, get over your discouragement? And your, and your oppression. Are you going to get into a place where you're going to get over your doubt? Because God cannot use us when we doubt. The Bible says he wants us hot or cold. He wants us hot. But hot or cold because doubt is a lukewarm place. And he said he'll spit you out of his mouth. God wants someone to stand up in these times for right and for, for the righteousness. Because there's so much, there's a line. Don't let don't don't get it, don't, don't, don't get it blurred, don't get it twisted, however you want to say it. There's a line right now going on in our world today. Right and wrong. What side are you on? Are you gonna stand up for what's right? And if so, we need to do it right. We need, we need to make a decision. Like Gideon finally made a decision. I'm going to stand up for what's right right now. May never get rich, but I'm going to stand up for what's right. I may, I may stay in the same economical situation I'm in, but I'm going to do what's right. I may be cast down by the masses, but I'm going to do what's right. I may be looked down upon because some of the some some of the, the my views and some of my some some of my things that I believe in aren't mainstream, but I'm going to do what's right. And what's right is by the word of God. I'm not going to continue like like Gideon to look for signs. I'm going to do what's right by the word of God. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to trust him. How many of us right now are willing to trust God? How many of us right now are willing to say, I believe? How many of us are willing to say, come hell or high water, I'm going to live by the word of God. I'm not going to compromise. I'm not going to go hiding, but I'm going to stand on the word of God because on the word of God is where my blessings are going to come from. Don't we know that the world cannot bless us? God is the only one that blesses us. It says every good and perfect gift comes from above. God is the one. So stop worrying about your neighbor. Stop worrying about everybody around you. Stop worrying about what they're saying and trust God. It's time to stand, folks. We're in a pivotal time of this world history. We've become comfortable. We've lived in our churches. We lived in our four walls. But this new normal is going to come. The new normal is going to basically be the old normal 
when, when the, because the Bible says, go ye into. It didn't say come ye into. It says, go ye into all of the world and compel men and women to follow him. The new normal is we got to get out. We got to go. We're going to come back and re rejoice and, 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 and energize. But all of us got to be real missionaries and go. Tell someone of the goodness of Jesus. Let them see the light inside of you. Time to stand up because what God is looking for is looking for somebody who will go. And folks will say, what must I do to be saved? When they see the goodness of God in you, time to stand for what's right. Time to stand for the glory of God. Time to stand for what God wants of you that you may fulfill the purpose of God has in you and what you are here for. If you don't know what you are here for, if you don't know your purpose, I want you to close your eyes just for a few moments. Close your eyes just for a few moments. And first of all, ask God to forgive you for all of your sins. Lord, please forgive me for all of my sins. For I'm a sinner. Hallelujah. I'm a sinner. But you died for my sins. And rose on the third day with all power in your hand. Lord, please forgive me and be my God as I will be your child. Lord, please give me the insight of what you will in me. Give me the insight of why. I am here in my purpose. Give me direction of which way to go, what to do and what to say. Give me, Lord, a comfort and an understanding of that purpose, of that task. Lord, I believe I am more than this of what of what is seen. Lord, I believe that you brought me here to enhance your kingdom for a particular purpose. Give me an understanding of that purpose right now, Lord. Touch my heart, touch my mind. Give me, Lord, the faith that I need because you said in your word, Lord, that you have prayed. You told Peter. You have prayed for him just like you have prayed for me. That my faith fails not. Give me the strengthening of my faith. Strengthen my faith, Lord. That I may do what you would have me to do. And to walk in your will, your way, in your word. And I'm going to praise you, Lord. And I'm going to thank you, Lord. For as we move forward, I believe that you're going to do more than I could ever imagine. More, hallelujah, than I see. You are, I am more than what you see. I'm a child of God. And I'm going to bless your name, Lord. And I'm going to look to you. For all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Lord, we pray right now for any sick among us. Touch and heal right now. Raise up for your glory. You said by your stripes we're healed and we claim a healing right now in the name of Jesus. We claim a wholeness. Lord, we pray right now that you touch our hearts, you touch our minds, Lord. Give us the strength to carry on. Give us the joy that only you can give. Give us the happiness that only you can give. 
Strengthen our bodies again, Lord, that we may carry on in your way. Bless those, Lord, who need provision right now. Provide in the name of Jesus. Bless right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray right now. Hallelujah. We pray right now that you bless the frontline workers. Cover them in your blood. Continue to cover them in your blood as they continue to work on your behalf. Pray for leadership everywhere, Lord. World leadership, country's leadership, local leadership, that they may consult you and make the right decisions that we may be unified as your people and you get the glory out of every and any situation. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Today is a day of communion. Hallelujah. And we're going to give you time to get your communion items together. I will pass them out. And as you go and get them, begin to think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done. Father God, we thank you and we praise you for all things, Lord. Lord, we thank you for this time of communion that we may, holy sacrament, that we may commune with you. Lord, we pray right now for the crackers, Lord, that symbolizes your broken body. Lord, we pray right now for the juice that represents your blood. As we know that there is no remission of sin without the shedding of blood. As blood is life, and you've given us life. Lord, we pray for each and every person who is partaking in this communion. We ask that you bless, heal, set free, deliver, Lord. Lord, please forgive us for all of our sins, as we are sinners, saved by grace. We ask that we, as we take the Holy Sacrament, Lord, that you work miracles in each and every one of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we're going to stand wherever you are. 1 Corinthians 11, reading starting at the 23rd verse. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The blood, the blood, the blood. You may be seated. The blood. Andre Crouch's the blood. Hallelujah. That gives me strength. From day to day. And as we've taken our communion, just taking a little time just to worship. Because he didn't have to do it, but he did. Hallelujah. So it, I believe it is it's a good time just to just to stop what we're doing. Block out everything except for Jesus and the blood that he shed. It will never, never lose its power. The blood still works. Miracles right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Before we, before we dismiss, before we dismiss, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. Put your hand, the blood, put your hand wherever you need God to work some things out in your life. If it's in your mind, if it's in your heart, if it's in your soul, if it's in your body, put your hand. Hallelujah. You're going to pray for yourself in the, in the, in hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. 
And the same anointing in this room. Hallelujah. The same anointing in this room. Will transcend to wherever you are. The same anointing in this room. God transcends and goes anywhere he needs to be. So right now, power. Somebody help me say power. 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 Gee, hallelujah. Wonder working power. Put your hand. Go ahead. Put, where, 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 where do you need that power? be victorious because greater is he that is in me that is he that's in the world Blessing to the ministry. Hallelujah. Be a blessing to the kingdom of God. 
that we may continue to do his work in this part of the vineyard. Giblify, I believe you should be on the screen. Mail, you can mail in your checks and you can bring in your cash. We'll give you a little time to do that. And we praise God. We praise God for your liberal out, liberality and what you're doing for the kingdom of God. And we appreciate you being people of God and wanting to see souls saved through the ministry. Reminder of we have prayer and Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. Prayer line at 6.30 in the morning. Bible study on Tuesday night. Prayer at your house starting at 7.30 and at the church at 7.30. And the lesson starts at 8 on Tuesday nights. Intercessory prayer on Sunday nights at the church. Noonday prayer. Tuesday through Friday at the church. And of course, Sunday, as, as some call it, a worship experience on Sunday mornings at 1030. And we thank God for all of you. We will be together in each other's presence soon. I believe that. But I want you to know until we do, I want you to know that God loves you and I love you too. And, and pray God's choicest blessings upon you. Walk in confidence of the Holy Ghost. Walk in your purpose throughout this week and for the rest of your life. And know that God did not bring you this far to leave you now. He's looking for you to go higher and higher in him. Again, God bless you and I love you. Thank you for joining us in worship today. We pray that you were blessed during our time together. Stay connected with Deliverance Tabernacle Church Pasadena on social media, on our YouTube channel, Facebook, Instagram, and our website, deltab1.com. You can help us reach the world for Jesus by supporting this ministry financially. Contribute through the Givelify app on your smartphone or on your desktop computer on givelify.com. Enter Deliverance Tabernacle Pasadena in the search bar to access our giving page. You can also send your financial gift to 1299 Sunset Avenue, Pasadena, California, 91103. Remember to join us Tuesday for Bible study on YouTube Live at 8 p.m. Always know we love you and we are continuously praying for you because we are family. On behalf of Pastor Terry and First Lady Robin Turrentine and all of your sisters and brothers at Deliverance Tabernacle, have a blessed week.